So that idea that people are actually paying attention to it, um, that was the most exciting. Even though it was just one link on a morning in February 2009. So, were we filming that, by the way? I didn't even... Oh, see, I was acting more naturally because I didn't know you were filming me. <laughs> That's not going to fit in with the rest, then. Scott Sumner. Uh, Dr. Scott Sumner. We go to Scott Sumner. We welcome him to the show. I suppose for me, the most exciting moment was probably in uh, early 2009 when I got that first link. I mean, at the time, I didn't think anyone was even going to read the blog, to be honest. And, and then to finally see, yes, I'm getting links. People are reading it. People are paying attention to what I'm saying. That, that was really pretty exciting. Maybe we should cut because I, I should have planned a, a better list here. When I started at Bentley in the 1980s, monetary policy was quite frankly pretty boring. So I started to focus on the Great Depression because that seemed to be a really interesting problem that still wasn't fully resolved. What the average person does is confuse the symptoms of the depression with underlying causes. They don't know the role of monetary policy and policy mistakes that actually cause the Great Depression. I had to go back and start at ground zero, collect the data, really dusty old volumes on central bank information. I read essentially the whole New York Times from the 1930s on microfilm. An entire newspaper for an entire decade. Mm -hmm. And that's the point where I realized I had a bigger project than I imagined initially, that I could take all of these individual pieces and put it into a unifying framework in a single book. Well, I had completed the book by roughly 2005, but publishers didn't want to publish it. <laughs> and then the Great Recession hit. 85 billion. Did you lower your standards to a The American people I agree. are paying. It was only more recently when we got into the Great Recession that I saw parallels with the Great Depression. It seemed to me that most of the discussion was missing the point. Other economists were looking at interest rates. They assumed that money was easy, but commodity prices, stock prices, real estate prices, every other asset market was signaling money was too tight. And that's what really motivated me to get involved in blogging. I didn't think anyone was going to read my blog. I never thought it was going to catch on. But a few months after I started blogging, I was suddenly getting lots of invitations for speaking at conferences, writing op-eds. I was pleasantly surprised to see a number of publishers express an interest in the book.